Hi guys. Um, first, I apologize for not being with you today. Uh, second, I apologize for taking the the easiest learning objective, the epidemiology. And uh, third, I apologize to Dr. Cease for apologizing so many times. But anyway, um, now I'm truly an expert on uh, the epidemiology of anaphylaxis, and uh, hopefully you will be soon. So let's begin. Um, okay, so anaphylaxis, first I did a little bit of a uh, little brush up just to remind myself what exactly it is. And so I'll share that with you. I know Magdalena is going to talk more about it in a few minutes. But uh, it's a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Um, between 1% and 15% of the U.S. population is at risk for anaphylactic reactions. And uh, you can see that's underlined here. Uh, it's kind of uh, vague, but I'll explain that in a little while, where they get those numbers from. And it's a, it's a broad range, right? Anyway, so what happens, and the basic mechanism, I'll just go through that quickly, is uh, an antigen, in our particular case from a bee sting, binds to cross-licked antibodies, IgE antibodies, on mast cells uh, in the vascular connective tissues. These mast cells, they degranulate and release chemicals, uh, including histamines, cytokines, and other inflammatory molecules, which uh, cause vasodilation and uh, all kinds of other problems with the, uh, with the vessels. Um, the uh, TNF-alpha leads to a, a blood pressure decrease and vascular permeability. And we saw that our patient had a 65 over 35 uh, blood pressure when she was brought in, and, uh, and she had edema. Okay. So this is a, uh, a table that I just kind of stole from our uh, MBLD lectures uh, from a while ago. And um, here you can just see some of the effectors in type 1 hypersensitivity on the left, their activity on, um, on their targets. Uh, so they include histamine, your eicosanoids, and uh, cytokines, and so on. And on the right, you can see some of the drugs used to counter them. So this is just a reference slide. On the bottom, you see the symptoms involved in type 1 hypersensitivity. Um, and we saw a lot of these in our patient. Here's the, the next slide that was, that was in that original pre presentation. And it has your uh, mast cell on top. It doesn't show the uh, cross-linked IgE antibodies. But when you get the degranulation, it leads to GI problems, airway problems, and uh, blood vessel problems. And so we really saw our airway problems and blood vessel problems in our patient. Okay, on to the, the epidemiology. So common causes. Um, here you can see the agents causing anaphylaxis are identical among adults and children. So there's no real, real difference there. Um, and uh, the most common causes, they fall into four four main categories, those being foods, drugs, uh, latex or, or substances, and, um, and insect stings. And so out of foods, you can see the most common are peanuts, shellfish, eggs, and wheat. Um, and out of those, the most common is definitely peanuts. I think we all know someone with peanut allergy. And uh, also wheat, I've met a couple of people with like gluten allergies. So when they eat that, they have these severe anaphylactic reactions, so they have to be really careful what they're eating. Um, that accounts for 1 to 2% of the general population who, who suffer from these reactions. Uh, in drugs, the most common are from beta-lactam antibiotics, so that includes penicillins and some others, uh, radio contrast media used for, for dyes and imaging, and uh, a lot of people are actually allergic to um, to, uh, or they have anaphylactic reactions to aspirin and other NSAIDs. Um, this is accounting for 2 to 3 percent of the hospitalized patients. And so one thing to be very concerned about is how you're treating your patients once they're in the hospital. Because um, you don't want to give somebody penicillin if they're allergic to it. And it's, it's especially, um, especially a concern if they're not able to tell you that they're allergic to it. Um, yeah, so penicillin is the most frequent cause of anaphylaxis in all humans, and it accounts for uh, three-quarters of the, of the fatal cases. Um, latex, this is also another biggie. It's 1 to 6 percent of the general population, and it's actually higher in healthcare workers, so that's pretty important for us because, um, well, we're going to be healthcare workers. 
Um, that's why I think you, you guys must remember in the anatomy lab, we were using the purple nitrile gloves. And, uh, and I think they have those in a lot of the hospitals now. And then finally, bee stings, what our patient was, uh, was suffering from accounts for one uh, or 0.5 to 5% of the general population. So now if you add up the highs and the lows of all these percentages, you can see where they got that 1% to 5% figure, which uh, still might be a little underrepresented because you, you're not always getting the proper reporting if something's not as severe that's requiring a hospital admission. Okay, moving on to the prevalence. Um, so out of the inpatients, um, one out of every 3,000 inpatients suffers from an anaphylactic reaction. And so that's actually, seems pretty high to me. Uh, and then it has a 1% risk of death, which is, which is also pretty high. So 500 to 1,000 annually in the U.S. actually die of these anaphylactic reactions. And, um, and you can imagine why with the bronchoconstriction and all these other problems. Um, women and men are equally likely to have a reaction. And on the last slide I said that there's no real difference between adults and children. So um, there's no real selectivity. There could be some genetic, uh, genetic components, but not really a gender or age, age difference. Uh, the peak incidence is, the, is in the summer, and that's probably because of increased exposure to outdoor uh, allergens and, and other, kinds of, um, other kinds of things outside. Yeah, that's it. And um, in general, the uh, frequency of anaphylaxis in people with asthma is no... Um, is no more than the frequency in the general population. That's right. So um, asthma doesn't really make people more likely to have anaphylactic reactions than people than than people without asthma. On the bottom, just a couple of tables that I took from 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 my uh, from my source, and it has some of the information I was talking about on the last slide. The estimated U.S. population at risk. So that's your one to fifteen percent, and then the number of deaths on the right. Anyway, so that's about it. Um, thanks for your time. Sorry I couldn't be there today. And uh, any questions? Okay, no, I didn't think so. All right, have a nice weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.